You are listening to the Shopify Solutions Podcast, a podcast for Shopify store owners that brings you concrete examples on how to build and grow your e-commerce brand. Your host is Scott Austin. He owns a Shopify agency called Jade Puma. In this podcast, Scott will share his e-commerce insights and best practices with you. Hey everyone, Scott Austin here. Uh, welcome to this episode of the podcast. And for this episode, I have a guest. Uh, JT is the owner of Reptichip, and that's a company I've been working with for a year, year and a half now. And JT has done a fabulous job in growing his business over that period of time, um, especially his online store and his Shopify store. So I wanted to bring him on so that you, other store owners can see all the different things that he's done, because there's no one silver bullet. Um, and learn from how scrappy he's been uh, for the past year, year and a half in uh, building his business. So welcome, JT. Hi. Thanks, Scott, for having me on. Would you tell us a little bit about Reptichip? What is your product? So our product line is uh, based around a coconut husk chip, if you can imagine that. That's uh, used in agriculture, but we use it for reptiles and animal bedding. That's my niche. Yeah, and I love the way you said niche because I always say there's riches and niches, and you know you definitely have picked a niche, um, and it's very focused, right? And and I think that brings power to to what you're doing. Um, has your product changed in the past year, year and a half? Not a lot of changes. We brought some uh, new products to the market, but it's a slow process. Uh, being in that we're with animals. We want to make sure that everything is 100% above board and that the products ring true um, to one, us, and to our customers. So we do a lot of testing before we bring anything to market. So a lot of experimentation and stuff. But uh, other than that, remained relatively the same, adding one or two products a year. And how large is your product catalog? Like how many different SKUs do you have? Uh, outside of like multi packs, we basically have seven or eight go to products, and then we have some other product lines that we carry for that are more uh, contributing to that kind of thing. Uh, not our branded products, but uh, another company's branded products too. Yep, yep. And in in the the past year and a year and a half, how much has your online business grown? Oh, I'm not, I don't have numbers in front of me, but I think we were averaging about a year and a half ago, we were averaging gross on, on our website, yep. uh, maybe four or five grand. Uh, the, the caveat to that is we, we are actually with the company paying paying them to do run some ads and stuff. So the, uh, the profitability of that was pretty, pretty small. Yep. And so you were like four or five grand a year, year and a half ago. And that's what I remember. I remember that 5,000 number. Monthly. Yeah. Monthly. Yeah. Yep. And what are you at yeah. these days? Uh, last month, I think gross was around 25. So uh, we've been going up. That was yeah, last month. Uh, We've been steadily going up. Yeah. Know. Here's well, the paid that, advertisement due, due to you. <laughs> well, no, it, it's, it's, it's due to you, right? And, and we've, worked, we've worked really well together in the past year, I think. And that's what I, I want to get into is all, all the things that we've done to grow your business from 5,000 to 25,000. That's 5X, a little more than a year, less than a year and a half. Um, and, you know, a lot of that was low-hanging fruit. We won't, we won't be able to 5X it in the next year. But, right. you know, if you keep being aggress as aggressive as you are and expanding your efforts, you know, I think it'll continue to grow. Um, so so no no serious change in product, but a serious change in uh, revenue. And, and, you know, yeah. where do you think that change came from? Well, you know, I, we didn't even address. I, I hired you originally to do a wholesale site based off of our current at the time, our, our current retail site. Yep. Uh, that's not even including those numbers. So that's a totally separate number. And I'm very happy with those numbers as well. So real number is more than that. Yep. Um, the, uh, as far as 
what I'm sorry, what was the question or we attributing? Well, so we, we five X your business, you five X your, your revenue in the past year or so. What do you contribute that to? Like, you know, what, what sort of efforts did you have to go through to make that happen? A, a lot of different things, right? One was tackling making the, the website more user friendly. We even had to uh, uh, move it over to a different theme. Yep. Um, um, just because the, the theme that I was using was not, uh, didn't allow us to do the things that we wanted to do. Uh, we also moved over email marketing from MailChimp to Clavio. Recommendation of you, and you're very uh, savvy at the Clavio. Uh, and I'm still, you know, to this day trying to learn it, but it's such an effective tool for us. Uh, that's that's brought in a lot of revenue for us. Um, you know, there's a number of other things like um, just the way that we use coupons. Um, uh, we have outside efforts like uh, going to shows or specifically targeting uh, certain customer lists. Um, <clears throat> That's helped grow in the business. Yep. But one thing that I wanted to mention outside of the, just the website in particular, is that Scott, I also use you as a, uh, a mentor, like business mentor. Uh, that's to me, that's proven to be very valuable. The, uh, the relationship that we have and uh, being able to bounce some ideas off of you because what I didn't realize when we initially hired you, and I kind of like, I, I remember I had you on with uh, a friend that does business analytics and stuff like that. And uh, we kind of went through a process and then we did, you know, we started off with the wholesale side and then we've, you know, gradually grown from there. So we took our, I don't know if we took our time, but we definitely did our due diligence on you, but what I've learned over time is that because you have your own businesses uh, and you have a background in just this, but the, the the beauty of it is that you see, and I don't know how many customers or clients you have, but the, you see a lot of different businesses. So yep. you have a, a deep background in what's working for other businesses and you can bring that to the table. Uh, there's stuff that you were like immediately dismissed that if, if we're, you know, like interested in going that route and you're like, here's what I would do if I was you, I'd come over here. I, I'm sure that that is um, something that's probably un, unaddressed uh, when, when people are, you know, looking to have a site built or managed, you know, by you. Yeah, so yeah. I, that's been a big deal for me. Well, thank you. Thank you. I, I'm, I have a lot of opinions, right? And I'm more than willing to share them for better or for worse. Uh, but I do find, you know, you know, and this isn't about, I, I don't want this episode to be about me. I actually want to be about you because you, you, you are an inspiration for other store owners once they hear your story. Um, but the thing that, that I spend a lot of my time on is trying to convince my clients not to do things, right? And stay focused on what the important things are. And I think what, what made, makes us work together so well is you're willing to try things. Um, and, and we both look at the data in the end and we learn from it. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, and so we'll, we'll I want to go back and, and talk about, you know, the things that you've done to improve your site. And I want to start off with your, uh, your website redesign, right? Cause you had spent a lot of money getting a completely custom website built and it was beautiful. I was intimidated by your website when I first saw it really? because it, it looks so nice and, and your, your custom designers had done some pretty, you know, you know, sophisticated, elegant things inside of it. You had a nice looking website and it cost you a ton of money, but it was pre-online store 2.0. And because it was custom, it didn't have to go through the Shopify review process. Therefore, it wasn't compatible with a lot of things, you know, like apps and, and normal functionality that you would expect. And, it, you know, after about, I don't know, six or eight months of us working together, it became a blocker for us, right? We didn't want to spend the money of doing a redesign. Yeah, originally. We were doing as much as we could, as scrappily as we could. But we got to the point where it became a blocker for us. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And then, you know, because we had started improving the revenues, 
You know, you invested a lot of money in with me to do a, a, a redesign. But we, the nice thing is you had that north star of your elegant design that we got to copy in 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 you know right. inspired by. So we ended up with a, a store that's just as elegant, I think, but easier to manage and right. integrates with all the latest Shopify functionality, which has been really really powerful for us. Right? Well, and seamless to me, right? Like you just said, all right, hey, um, you, we're gonna you know work on this new theme, we're gonna build it, it's all back in, behind the scenes kind of thing. And then when we launch, we're still gonna be testing it out. Like, I wouldn't have known any better until, uh, you know, you stop saying like, hey, we can't really do it because of this, but now any anything that we wanna do, we can uh, kind of move forward with. Um, that was, what I appreciate about that as well is the fact that off the bat, um, when we were talking about doing this retail site and, uh, you know, all the improvements, essentially that's what I hired you for on the retail side is make improvements. Um, what would you do kind of thing? Yep. Um, <clears throat> which I really appreciated, but what I also appreciated was the fact that you were, you would say, you know, let's see how this goes and then drop the money on moving over, right? Like, let's just see how it goes first and see if the juice is worth the squeeze. And then when it was, not a problem, we transitioned over. So you weren't in a hurry to spend my money. I just think that that's, you know, these are all things that um, outside of the magic that you do, I, I think that are important to address. Yeah, I, I call that operationalizing you know, your spend, like you don't want to be spending more, investing more in your business than the revenue you're getting back, right? Because as small e-commerce stores, small being, you know, less than $10 million, you guys aren't getting external funding. You don't have a treasure chest of money. So you, you need to be spending your profits. You need, can't be losing money because you go out of business when you do that. And I actually have seen many small stores go out of business because they overspend on their ad budget or spend too much time on the website. And it's like, no, have your investment in your business, follow your revenue. Once your revenue is growing, then your, you know, your spend is going to grow. Like when we met and started working together, you were all of the business, the marketing, and, you know, you had some people in operations and fulfillment, but today you have a second person, don't you? Yep. We've got uh, um, a marketing person, um, which is something that we worked hard to get to right i mean i think we talked about it for a year yep. um you were even giving me ideas like hey you know like let's just see if we can get somebody part-time at like the local school we can talk to the marketing department and i'm really particular and opinionated as well so i think uh i throw it back uh not on you but uh you know there's some things that uh and i'm sure you're you're uh, listeners will understand there's some things that like you're going to say that i'm like no i, I get it i respect your opinion uh, i'm not going to do that though um another thing i appreciate is you're candid and will always give your opinion another thing is that i, that, I, I do give my opinion <laughs> well i mean that, I, I, that's that's one of the things that i really want because whether i like it or not i'm going to get it and um i need that you know i appreciate that from other people and I hope that I'm like that with people. Um, but the other thing is you treat my, my, you treat my business and my, you know, funding or budget like it's yours. I think that that's um, something that uh, you can't, you can't really find very easily. So, um, but, but know, the, once, once, I once, think that's, that's good. Once again, making this about you, what, what, what I love that you did, right? Is I was you know telling you, you you need to invest in content, you need to invest in marketing, you need to be creating campaigns, and we had to do that together, right? But now yep. that you're five x the revenue, you have the revenue to justify the spend in the marketing person, and now you have a full time head, which a year ago that would have been a dream a dream for both of us. Like there's no way you're, you're going to have a full time person for that, and now you do because you have you know confidence that we're going to keep that revenue going to justify that spend. And, and you know, it's funny because I've, I've realized that our relationship now, when we, we do our, our, you know, twice a month or every other week meeting, 
I, I realize now that we're spending a lot more time talking about promotions, how to make it happen. How to, so the fur it's like the further we get going on it, the more direct impact we have. Like the time that we spend together now is about bringing in money, right? Yes, bringing yes. in that's in, instead of back end stuff, which is exactly as the ball got rolling, it just kind of leveraged up and. Uh, the things that we're doing now and having learned throughout the process, the things that we're doing now are, are just becoming more and more effective. And like you said, with the revenue increase, now we can afford to experiment a little bit more and, you know, actually try to do maybe a promotion the right way instead of just piecemealing it, go all in on it. And if it doesn't work, Oh, well, you know, that's part of learning. And then when it works, when it hits, it's like, okay, hey, we're on to it. Now we're going to keep developing this thing. And some of those have become really, really lucrative for us. Yeah, yeah. The way I think about it is in 2023, we spent that year building your foundation. We were adding tools yeah. to your toolbox. And mm -hmm. we also got some basic learnings in, right? So we were testing with those tools. But now in 2024, the foundation is built. We mm -hmm. know enough about the tools. We have a plan. And now our goal in 2024 is to maximize your revenue and increase the learnings about your customers during that time frame. And, and you know, even with that said, like, I, I didn't feel like we were ever, we, even when we were in the building phase in the last year, I didn't feel like we were stagnant at all. I always knew, like every week, every other week that we would talk, I'm like another, you know, I always felt like there was progress so I could see how it's coming together. You know, like not having to worry about the details of, of the minutia of the website was, uh, you know, that was pretty... Um, pretty legit. Let me focus more on the macro. Yep. Yep. So let's talk about some of the foundational things. Cause uh, you know, we did the redesign, we talked about that. And one of the big things that came out of the redesign, I think two big things. One was we now have a sections anywhere theme that we can add, you know, pages to all the time, right? We do a landing page for this, a landing page for that. You're like, you go yep. off to a show, we make a landing page for that thing, world snake day, yada, yada, yada. Right. The yeah, other I one, can I, I don't have to say, hey, Scott, can you build this thing out for me? That's that's the beauty of it is like when, when we had like the custom site and everything else, yeah. like I was reliant on everybody else to do something. But now if I need something done, you shop me a tutorial and bam, I can do it same day. I don't have to worry about any of that other stuff. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, Shopify does a really good job in allowing store staff that aren't developers or technical people to be able to do a lot of the basic things. So even your new marketing hire, you know, can build a page yeah. or create an email and all that good stuff, which is, which is absolutely fabulous, right? You're, you're empowered. And one of the fun things I want to talk about with your, your site redesign, because it was so much fun, was your business, right? You, you sell coconut substrate. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's five or six different versions of the coconut, basically. But, you know, it's a, applicable for hundreds and if not, you know, thousands of different types of animals, right? Mm -hmm. So every every type of frog you can think of, every turtle, every snake, every spider, they all can use this substrate. So what we did, right, in your store was we built a blog around all of the animals. So each animal, you know, we would say, you know, the Amazon blue frog, I don't know if that's a real animal or not, it's made it up, right? Or or the, you know, the pink boa constrictor, right? And right. we built we built a blog article around that, but because it was sections anywhere, we could tie that straight into the product catalog. And we actually built a really cool navigation experience where you can you know pick on snakes. It shows you all the different types of snakes, and you pick the one mm -hmm. that's yours. Um, but for SEO, we were then able to because we had this platform of, of online store mm -hmm. 2.0. Now say, all right, here's the animals we want to target for SEO purposes. And now you know because SEO takes a long time. But now we're starting to see traffic come in for all these different. So when people look for, you know, how do I care for my pink boa constrictor? You're showing up in the listings because we actually have a page optimized for pink boa constrictor where we never had that before because it was too hard to do in your old theme. That, that's the kind of thing that's going to pay off forever now, right? Yeah, that's um, so 
that's the, you know, a long-term, like you were saying, SEO, we're, we're hitting, you know, we've got like pay per click, like the very tactical uh, piece of it, all the way up through uh, like the long-term SEO strategy. And we're, like you said, we're starting to see some SEO come back. Uh, the beauty of that was, I think we were also able to create a lot of content very quickly using AI. Um, not always ideal. And for us, it's definitely not the end state, but uh, correct me if I'm wrong in SEO, we wanted to get the pages out published, referring to animals, correct, but not as detailed as I would prefer it. It's important to have that, uh, that, you know, publish it as yeah. you know, recently as possible to start gaining some traction. Um, in fact, now we're on the step of going through and starting to prove some of that stuff, build out the pages even more detailed. And it's given us a launch pad for some other stuff. One, like at the bottom, we can say, you know, here's the animals, here's a lot of cool information about them. Um, here's some, uh, you know, like whatever their range is or their diet or whatever, people are just interested in that in general. I mean, they're not looking for a substrate, they're starting to hit on it in general. Uh, but we've got a lot of ideas from there. Like what if we had a very specified care sheet for that animal or something, yep. and then you subscribe to get that care sheet, right? There's another added benefit bonus to us. Um, those kind of things, like it's just bringing it all kind of together, um, you know, investing just a little bit at a time, a little bit at a time, but, I can, I'm in the stage now, you know, year two of doing this is kind of just like, um, you know, you start to see the pieces starting to come together and you yep. see like the bigger picture of the yep. stuff. So January, 2023, I think it was, I had the three most productive hours of my Shopify life in your store. Right. <laughs> and in three hours I added judge me reviews, subscriptions and Clavio. And those <laughs> were three foundational tools as you talk, as you just talked about, right. They all link together really well, but it's hard to see it when we do that, right? Oh, so, when, I, when you were, you know, it's like, you know, because our old site, we have reviews. And yep. We had, you know, MailChimp, and it was, you know, I, I didn't know how to use it very well besides, like, just do the basic, you know, newsletter blast kind of thing. Um, and so when you were like, yeah, we got to have reviews, uh, nice. Really? You know, we have to pay a little bit for these reviews and now I see how it comes together. Like you yep. said, you know, your site needs to be live. That's one of the things that I think you taught me that I, it, you know, maybe it didn't register exactly when, but it's like, that's the community. You need people like, you need updated content. You need new reviews. You need like them to see you're active on socials. You need, you know, all of that kind of stuff. Like it's the place to be, like keep, keep coming back. And I think uh, that started to, I started to understand more and that rang true a little bit as we got going. I'm like, oh, you know what? This is, I'm starting to get it now. I'm not, I'm not the sharpest you know, knife in the drawer, but after a while, I start to kind of figure it out. And it totally makes sense now. Now I'm all about it. Yep, yep. Well, and so, but, you know, every business is different, right? And you have to look, you know, and I, I say this all the time to my clients, it's like, just because you see a best practice elsewhere, I totally believe that best practice is true for that business, and it may or may not be. Well, let's just give them the benefit of the doubt. That's good for their business, right? It doesn't mean it's good for your business. And, you know, the beautiful thing about your business is, you know, you have a consumable or a replenishable, right? Mm -hmm. So people buy your coconut substrate for their, their animal's tank, and next month they need more, right? So yep. it's, like, it's like chocolate or, or, or coffee kind of thing. And we've done a really good job in leveraging that. So for you, repeat customers become absolutely essential, right? You know, if you're selling diamond engagement rings, none of that matters, right? It's all well, about hopefully, attracting new customers. Only one or two, maybe a couple times. Yeah, yeah, in your life, you yeah. Um, not, not a monthly thing. Hopefully not, right? Hopefully not. A subscription service for that. But uh, in your space, it's it. You know, that's why adding subscriptions. And adding, yep. you know, a good email tool was so, so important. And then, you know, you know, so you've done a really good job in focusing on collecting email addresses so that you can market to them. Because 
Yeah. Email has been a really effective marketing tool for us because even though they bought the product in the past or intended to buy it and signed up, well, they still need it again and they always need it again. Mm -hmm. And, you know, mm -hmm. Clavio has been an absolute out of the park success for you, I think. I, absolutely. Uh, so much so that, you know, we are starting to, it, it really kicked off other promotional campaigns for us. Like you were talking about, we're, I don't know if it's a shoestring budget, but we, we don't have a lot of budget for, for ads and everything else. Yep. And you, we don't have a lot of people, you know, we have workers in our uh, manufacturing facility and stuff, but as far as um, all the management, all the admin, all that kind of stuff, like a lot of your listeners, probably it just starts with me. And then um, I'm lucky now that I've, I've got broke my marketing person. Uh, and so the, uh, I was lucky to grow into that, but now we're starting to tackle things outside of paid advertising or, you know, socials, like we're going to, uh, shows and coming up with promotions at shows to capture email addresses because what's a more qualified customer than one that's walking into a reptile show to see reptiles, you're not going to get much better. I just did a recent podcast episode inspired by your show efforts, right? And it was explaining to people, you know, hey, go to shows and get email addresses and here's, here's how to do it. And that was all based off the things I had learned watching you do that. And, you know, as you think about your business, right, what, you, what I hear you saying is, you know, you've got this, this, we built this engine for repeat purchases, right? We've got subscriptions in place and people are subscribing so that, that you know, constant revenue is turning up. And then we also have, you know, emails to re-engage the ones that aren't the subscribers. Um, and before I go on on that, why don't you tell us the learning that you learned and taught me about subscriptions and emails and campaigns? Do you remember that um, one? Which one are we, are we talking about? In the one where we don't send email campaigns out to subscribers. Um, yeah. So, you know, as we, as we go along, we're always learning something, um, different. So I think, or like with a lot of this stuff, it's the shotgun approach. So you get a little bit more and more precision. And so one of the things that we learned was, um, you know, we might send out, we don't like to rely on a discount every time, you know, we do giveaways or something else or buy one, get one, whatever it is. But, uh, and when we're talking about sending out a blast to subscribers um, for a discount um, and uh, we, we hit our subscription service subscribers and they come back and they say, hey, can I get, if you're giving me 10% off from the subscription of the product, now can I apply the 15% off you just sent out to all the uh, email subscribers? that probably is starting to get too tight on. So we're like, okay, hey, we need to control uh, yep. the groups a little bit, a, a little bit better. And I'm still, you know, like now I realize the value of having the audiences and the segments and the list yep. um, and having it very detailed so that you can then apply it to whatever campaigns that you're doing. Maybe I don't want to hit people that, um, you know, I just sold to 10 days ago off of the regular retail side or uh, what have you. And now we're applying that to socials. So, cause Clavio can work a uh, link to your socials, yep. at least meta. So uh, we're starting to use that. Like maybe we don't want to target the people that we already have as a customer. Like yeah. we can now link and not exclude them from our socials. Sorry. Sorry. Subscribe customers, but you know. <laughs> But, but no, it, it's, true. it's different folks, right? <laughs> what I always say is that when you look at a Clavio implementation that's been around with, you know, with a team that's been aggressive with it for like five years, you're amazed at how sophisticated it is, right? Like they've got flows with all sorts of paths and things going on. And, you know, you look at it, you're like, wow, these people are geniuses. How do they figure that all out? Well, they're not geniuses, no offense to anybody, right? They're just, you know, everyday store owners and they figure it out one step at a time. Like the thing we learned was, all right, we need a segment of subscribers and we send out a campaign with a discount in it. We're going to exclude subscribers from that campaign 
so yep. that we don't cause this, you know, conflict in their mind about how much of a deal they're getting kind of thing. And then we learned other things and we keep adding those one step at a time. And already your Clavio is much more complex than it was a year ago. And in two or three years, it'll be even more sophisticated. Right? I can see it now. I'm adding stuff now that I'm like, oh, we don't want to talk to the people that we're getting leads from at the show. If we're yep. doing a giveaway, we don't want to market something different to them before the giveaway has results, right? Yep. Like, so uh, I, I totally get it now about what you were saying about the complexity of things. Um, it's not really complex when you start from zero and you build it yourself. It's it's going to be pretty intuitive. Yeah, yeah. But it, it, it is that organic growth and it takes time to do that. And mm -hmm. it's because every business is different. You know, there's a lot of basics that are similar. But like I said before, like just because someone else has the best practice, doesn't mean it's right for your business. And you've got to learn those things on your own one step at a time. And, and I, I'm i a big believer that the, the way we learn the most is by making mistakes. And we do things wrong and we learn from it and correct from that um, kind of thing instead of trying to anticipate ahead of time what all the scenarios are going to be. Um, so, you know, I was talking about how, you know, in your business, you've got this consumable side of thing. And we did a really good job and are continuing to evolve that with subscriptions and email in re-engaging existing customers but what you did in the past years because you had that experience of spending lots of ad dollars and not getting a good return because if you have a great engine for your repeat customers you still need to be pouring more people into the top of the funnel right 100 uh, yep. so now what, yep. you're, what you're working on is this alternative strategy of mm -hmm. targeting your new customer acquisition through going to shows instead of spending dollars on advertising platforms Right. Going to shows instead and collecting email addresses because you have confidence in your email, not just your email platform, but also the campaigns you built around email in the last year to engage those people. Yep. And, and you see what works and you just start to expand from there. Yep. Um, but the value of it is, you know, we've done other uh, sales platforms in the past. Uh, we still do other sales platforms, but uh, nothing beats owning your, you know, owning your own customers and stuff. So, uh, whenever, whenever possible, we want to invest the limited ad spend that we have or the limited budget that we have, um, trying to hit back into our customers. Yep. There's always the need to have, like you said, at the top of the funnel, learning all of this though, um, specifically the past year with the website and how you've helped us build it uh, kind of I want to say it is from the ground up we had an idea of what it is but like as far as the business aspects of it all the tools that you brought to the table um it's taught me about my own sales funnel my own marketing funnel right like it's it's so much more clear now year in of what we need to do to get to the next area and how that funnel works for us in particular. Now I've got diagrams and diagrams, all that kind of stuff. And a lot of that translate directly to some things like Clavio or whatever, or you see another part of how the things start to link together. Like if I want to do a show list that we're attending, um, you know, we could link that with a lot of different things, um, you know, notification that could be linked with, um, you know, hey, we're going to be in this area. Now we're going to do a Clavio blast to everybody that signed up the past show. And we're going to target those people and say, hey, we're going to be, you know, just let you know, we're going to be here or whatever we want to do. Maybe a pre-sale. Yep. Yep. So, uh, yeah, it's, <laughs> fast forward, you know, a year from last year, I'm like, Ooh, I just feel like we're in a much better place and I understand my own business um, better specifically because of some of the things that we were doing with the website. Yeah. Yeah. Cause uh, I'm about to rant now. Cause as, as you say all this stuff, you, you, you know, I got YouTube open on another screen over here. I always have YouTube open. I'm looking at things and I use it for research and all. And what I uh -huh. can't stand about the internet is, you know, every video you see is all about how quickly you can get it done. When the reality is in e-commerce, the quicker you try to get it done, the worse it's going to be done, right? You, you right. Know, set up your Google Analytics 4 account in two minutes or less. If you set up right. your GA4 in two minutes or less, it is going to fail you, right? It should take three or four freaking hours, unfortunately, 
but that's what yeah. it should take because it's that hard and that complex. And if you don't set it up properly and you go for the quick win, then you don't get to, to measure things in the Google Analytics example. And, and I, I think that, you know, one of the reasons I want you on here to, is to explain to people who, you know, are at the position you were at a year ago, you know, and, oh, wow, this guy, you know, he 5 x his, you know, monthly revenue on his website. Like, you know, what's the silver bullet? The silver bullet is working really hard for a year, right? A little bit at a time, right? Yep. Like, yep. It's, eat, it's eating an elephant. I think that's the, that's the key is you just, you know, some days you can't hit it, so you try to make up for it on the other days and you just do the best you can, but you got to, you got to keep, keep building. I mean, I look at it now and I see how much I see exactly where we are and where I want to go a lot more than I did in the beginning. Um, when I kind of just handed you off something and I was like, uh, you know, Hey, help me. <laughs> yeah. But I feel like that's a lot of what, what we did is like, and then I, I, I learned, I learned by watching what you were doing. But, but that's, that's the key there, right? Cause I, I talk to so many clients all the time, like you were saying before, and a lot of them have the expectation that they're just going to hand me their problem. I'm going mm -hmm. to solve it and I'm going to hand it back to them and it's complete. It's sort of like, they, you know, when you go to a dealership, you're like, I want a car and they roll out a completely functioning car. The problem right. with an e-commerce business is you need to build that engine and you, the store owner, need to understand every right. single nut and bolt and spark plug in that engine. You just can't let it be a black box. No, and I don't want, like, there's the things that you, you're you doing that's recurring that need to, you know, be handed off to me, like, hey, you know, like a certain point where, like, got it, you know, yep. hey, how do I build my own landing page, and you taught me, got it, don't don't need Scott for that anymore, like, and I don't want Scott for that, because that's, you know, you created the, the system, now it's on us to, uh, you know, utilize it, um, but yeah, yeah, there is a learning curve for for us people that aren't, you know, web developers and stuff. And I think that uh, uh, another thing that I kind of like is like you, you can translate some stuff, right? Like we don't have to, I don't ever feel like I've got uh, too much tech speak and stuff. Like if I'm like, why is not this working? You're like, you explain it in a way that I can easily understand. So, yeah. so because um, the way I, I think about e-commerce businesses is like, a, they all have to have great products in today's world, right? Any, anybody with crappy products will not last for long. They also have great service and fulfillment. Those are givens, right? So the mm -hmm. secret sauce then is, is your customer acquisition. You know, e-commerce brands are successful at customer acquisition. That's what they're good at. Yeah. But every, yeah. They have to be good at products and fulfillment. That's a given. That is not going to differentiate you. What's going to differentiate no. you at a business level is customer acquisition. And if that's your secret sauce, why would you outsource that? You yep. have to and do in, that in-house. In building that loyalty, right? Yep. That brand loyalty. What's going to make them come to your website over and go to Amazon? Yep. Right? Amazon's easy. Everybody wants Amazon. Amazon's simple. You, two clicks. You can return it. Whatever. They've got. They're going to have that on all of us forever, right? Yep. But what's the brand loyalty that you're going to build at your site, and why do people keep wanting to come back? Um, and I think like we're, we're addressing those issues and starting to like, again, I'm starting to kind of see the bigger picture of, okay, how do we keep those customers? How do we gain them? How do we keep them? Um, and starting to have advantages over places like Amazon is using them, for instance. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that we can do because it's ours and we can do everything that we want with it and not abide by, you know, the rules of big corporate entity, whatever, like we're, we're effectual and I don't have to wait on customer service. I don't have to wait on uh, their policies. I don't have to abide by their specific rules. I create my own little world and now I'm inviting people into it. And like, we, we even can like, you know, we can fire customers now. I mean, you can't yep. do that on some other site, right? Like, yep. if you're not a, a good customer to us, or you want to take advantage of us, you have the control over that now. It's kind of a beautiful thing. <laughs> I see you smile because, and I'm smiling well, right now. Think about 
the day I got to fire my first client at Jade Puma was like one of the happiest days of my life. Um, you, it's a great you're not position. dependent on anybody else. You're like, I do whatever you want to, man. I'm, I'm, I'm okay. <laughs> One of the things that, you know, you talked about brand a second ago, and, and I think, you know, you do a really good job in showing that you care about the animals, right? It's not just you're selling a product. Um, can you talk a little bit about how, like, how you have campaigns, I think, where you, know, you build your brand by having a campaign that supports an animal-based charity and things like that? Right. Like, uh, we can um, dinner certain campaigns around um you know we, we have an organization in particular that we want to donate to and we can we can build that out and um and bring awareness to the the organization how how have you done in the past year because most brands have a hard time being the face of their brand and you know i always tell small store owners is embrace the small and i think you've done a really good job of that you know how did you get yourself more comfortable being the face of the brand and what steps did you take, if any, to get there? <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't, I'm not comfortable. I've never been comfortable doing that. Um, you know, if I could have somebody else online talking uh, about it for an ad or a promo, uh, I will. Um, but at some point, it's also just necessity, right? Like yep. in direct communication, um, we have to take on you know, podcasts and stuff. Uh, we do, you know, I do reptile podcasts every now and then, uh, that, you know, and when, when we're at a show and we're doing live and we just want to speak to the audience, mostly it's necessity, right? Like we, you just need to say what you need to say and, and get over it. Uh, where I, where I always am going to have a challenge is prepping something and then coming up with it or what it's like. And that's something, something you taught me was just like, just do it. Just set up your camera. Do it. That's it. That's also helped a little bit. Well, I, I think I had to mock you a couple of times and challenge your manhood to get you to to make a video. Yeah. But but the beautiful thing is you've actually made videos now, mm -hmm. which yeah. uh, I tell all my clients: if you're not making video with you in them, you're you're not living up to the potential of your brand. It's true. It's true, and it is so important. That's one of those things that, like you tell me, and I'm like, yeah, I get it, but like that's a lot of time. Uh, and then, you know, like I, one time I found myself, I'm like, I got a little bit of time. All right, let's try to knock out a video. Uh, and we made one and I did a couple rehearsals and I got, uh, my operations manager to film me and, uh, it might've taken 20 minutes, right? Yep. A lot of time relatively it might be a lot of time, but maybe, you know, you can squeeze out 20 minutes. Um, and then I launched it. So I was just thinking, Hey, what would, you know? What did Scott say? I just, you know, I did limited amount of, uh, you know, cutting and stuff like that to it. Uh, tried to improve audio. I don't know. Maybe I spent another 20 minutes on that. Launched it. Um, and immediately I didn't get great feedback. I didn't get bad feedback. I just didn't get a lot of feedback from the video. Yeah. Uh, and I was also, so I'm like, I think I, I think I showed it to you and you're like, oh man, you're coming across too dry. Like, I think it was humorous, but like, you're like, you're coming across too dry. Like it's all relative. Like your audience doesn't know this specific thing. So you have to clue them in as to what you're talking about. Um, and so I did, all I did is I just did subtitles under it. Like somebody else was being the video or developing the video. And it took off like a while. I mean, it did exactly what I could have. I mean, it did a lot. It did, did what I hoped it would do. Well, um, it, just off of that basic recommendation. You know? Yeah. Well, and and to be clear about the subtitles, they were making fun of you, right? Right. It, yeah. it was self-deprecating humor, and like my my favorite YouTube channel that I watch, uh, which is in, a, in, in another industry that I'm involved in, um, the the host of the channel is fabulous. But the editor is twice as fabulous because the editing and, and he makes fun of the host all the time. Like he's a personality yeah. in the videos, even though I've never seen his face. Right. And that's what your video did. You injected some humor making fun of you. And, yeah. and the best humor is self-deprecating. And you use that. 
Well, it made sense. It made sense then, but I think the what I learned out of the whole thing, and I'm fine with making fun of myself. I, yeah, I, I hope I hope people laugh at me when I make fun of me. They um, laugh with you. Yeah. They laugh with you, Jay. Yeah. But you know, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I don't care about all that. But what? But I what I learned about was like, hey, you got. You, it's like I have to get it kind of outside my framework and think more about the audience, right? Like they didn't know, you know, like if I'm trying to make a joke about all of this, you know, we barely have any inventory and I show like how it's in a warehouse full of inventory back there. It's still relative. Does the audience know that that's a lot of inventory or do they yep. think like, oh, he probably burns through that in a day or something, you know, cause I'm saying, we only have a little bit left. Yeah, it, like it, it didn't make sense to them. It was out of their frame. So you have to kind of bring them uh, into your world a little bit more. Well, and, and the other thing I'd, I'd add to that is, you know, you literally have to spoon feed your customers. Mm -hmm. Like we, we think that, and, and humans are sophisticated and complex people. They absolutely are. But when it comes to your customers and your business, they understand one tenth, if not one hundredth of what you think they understand about your yeah. business. Yep, that's that's what I'm learning. It's like yep. when you were, when we're doing something like that, um, you, you kind of gotta boil it down to like the guy that just you know, hey, he knows he knows my business, Reptichip. That's it. Yep, that's it. You didn't know anything else about it. So because yeah, as store owners, the the customers you talk to are mostly your friends who use you a lot, right, right. or yeah. the customer who's you know the the person that buys your product eighty times a year where everybody right. else buys it one time a year. So you're talking right. to, it's it's like talking to your spouse about your personality. Yeah, they know more about you than somebody who just, just met you on the job kind of thing. But we assume that every, all of our customers have that same level of intimacy with us as the few that we talk to who are actually our highest value ones. And they're the exception, not the rule in their understanding of us. Yeah, yeah. I a lot of lessons learned with yep. that. I think we'll we'll keep doing it, right? Because like that's what this whole thing about is learning, growing, and getting better every yep. day. If it's just a little, right? A little learning every day is 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 better than than going backwards, which many people do go backwards. So let's uh, talk a little bit about if we talk about learnings. You know, give me a couple of things you've learned about campaigns. You've tried a bunch of different campaigns in email, and I think only one is not working. But you. You now have a bunch of different types of campaigns that you can run. Yeah, uh, we've done you know we've done brand awareness campaigns and really learning what that is for us. Yep. It could be different things for different people, but you know, do we want to be hitting two million people? Well, I don't know. If they have some interest in reptiles, maybe, but uh, maybe our brand campaign, maybe our broader you know, top of the funnel type campaign is, you know, certain, like learning that there's a certain qualifier first, like they have to have an interest in reptiles or whatever. Yep. Um, but, uh, you know, down to like lead capture and how important that really is becoming to us, um, down to, you know, the actual sale. And then, you know, at the bottom, bottom of your funnel is, you know, resale, right? For us, it's like we captured the customer. Now we make them a lifetime customer, right? Like that, it never ends, right? We're always trying to recapture that same customer. I've learned that recently um, within the last year, I'd say is uh, that whole systematic funneling of, of, of our, our customers um, and, and how it continually needs to be fed not just at the top, but like you got to feed the people at all the different sales levels, right? Like you can't just you can't just throw new names in the top of it. Like you got to take care of the names at the bottom of it too. Yep, yep. So um, one of the things you did in the past year that I loved watching was the whole uh, Reptichetti thing. So mm -hmm. tell tell us the story of the Reptichetti. Uh. So I've got a buddy and we actually carry some of his products here uh, at our store. Um, he's a master at marketing. Like he can 
he, he develops new innovative ideas, gets people on board with it, and launches them. And he's usually just doing his thing. And one one day at a show, he threw me a little clickable knife that you get from overseas in China and you can have your brand written on it or whatever, stencil on it or whatever, right? And it's like a little switchblade, but it doesn't have a pointy end. It's more for like a safety for like cutting like seat belts and you can cut bags and stuff. And he threw me one of those and said, hey, man, this is all for you. And I said, oh, thanks, man, thanks. Uh, and I was just thinking it was one of his branded items. And he was like, no, 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 no. This is for you and your company. This You should do this. And I'm like, what am I going to do with this knife, right? Yep. He's like, "It's it opens your product. And uh, one of his buddies actually said it, told him, this is why he opened my record chip with it. And like that, uh, I was like, oh, that's brilliant, right? So, yeah. uh, you know, went on Alibaba and I found, you know, companies that have, you know, can stencil your stuff. Had <laughs> some sent over. Um, and now we're using that in particular as an incentive for a lot of different campaigns like lead campaigns or conversion campaign or in-person lead campaigns. Um, that little trinket really that cost very little has uh, d- done a lot for us. Um, and it just taught me the value in um, a lot of the things like yep. brand and all that kind of thing. So the uh, so just so people know, you know, what you do a lot with your products, you have, you know, Repta Chip is the brand name and you Repta other things like Repta Earth and, and stuff like that. So the Repta Shetty is a little baby machete with the Repta Chip brand on it. He actually has the Repta Shetty brand name on the little tchotchke. And it's a cute little like switchblade knife like you're talking about. But you have these big, thick bags that your product is contained in <laughs> that, that actually are a pain to open. And this knife is perfect for that. Um, what what does that Repta Shetty cost you per unit? I think it's like a dollar thirty, dollar forty or something like that. And then uh I mean shipping it to the people if we're giving it a you know, it's like three times as much, right? Yep, like yep. So the actual thing. So it in 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 person conversion is really ideal for that thing. Cause if you just hand it to somebody, uh it's that's that's money, right? Yeah. The um and, and, you know, this thing kind of took off too, right? Like, so I noticed like we have since Brooke is mar- our marketing person is like getting after other influencers and all types of stuff. Like now when we send out stuff to influencers to kind of like, you know, video or review or whatever, like we send them a rep to Shetty. Yep. So that now they're starting to every video, like opening up rep to Shetty in it. As and it's it got is. the little click when they open the little switchblade action. Everybody loves that. Yep. It's just a cool little trinket thing. Yep. But they're starting off opening all their stuff with the actual tool that we don't even, I'm not even trying to sell. We list it on the website and people buy it now. <laughs> so we've never um, run the numbers. So if you were to like guess, what do you think the value of an email address is to you? Um, it depends on where it came from because, yep. you know, if it's a, uh, if it's a show, it's going to be more valuable than somebody uh, off the street. Even may even be more valuable than one that's you know clicking online, like our, on our pop up or something. Yep. Um, if we're giving away something big, maybe it's not as valuable because maybe yep. it's just somebody that wants to you know enter in that giveaway. If it's you know if we're getting an email address from say. Uh, you know, a customer that isn't necessarily our customer, but has been buying our product through uh, a different platform. Yep. Me, that's worth a lot more. They're already a customer of ours. We just don't own the customer according yep. to uh, yep. other you know, terms and services. But so. like trading that dollar whatever value Reptichetti for an email address, is that a fair trade in your mind? A uh, dollar all day long. I mean, we'll go... If I think that that customer is going to, I mean, we'll pay six, eight, ten dollars Like, you know, and you got to just do the, do the math on it. If you have, 
you know, what's, what's a lifetime customer value? Like what's that worth is what the real question that you have to figure out before you start figuring out. So if my lifetime customer is worth $3,000, I can give away a lot of Reptichetti's, right? Yeah. Well, and then the other way you use the Reptichetti that I like is, you know, because you do you list it on the website. I think it's nine ninety five or something. So we we put a retail value behind it, and then you've done a couple campaigns where you're like, hey, I think your average order value is around fifty dollars or something like that. So you do a campaign where it says, hey, you know, if you put seventy five dollars, you know, in your cart, if you you make a purchase for seventy five dollars, we'll give you a free Reptichetti. Yeah. So spend twenty five more dollars, and we'll give you a product that cost us a buck fifty, and people see value in that because you've actually built hype around the product and you've made an emotional attachment to that free Chotsky product, you know, that is higher than just the dollar fifty that it costs you kind of thing. Yeah, I'm a big believer in this thing now. If you asked me two years ago, I would have said no way. But uh also like it's also a customer retention device too, yep. right? Like out of the blue, hey, I haven't heard from this customer in a while. I'm just gonna send them this they can say, hey, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Like, there's a lot. I know I feel good when I get something like that unexpected in the mail. Like, you know, there's, there. You just gets you thinking, there's people out there that just like, they're not taking you for granted. They really do appreciate you. And it costs barely anything to tell some really good customers, thanks. You know? Yep. So you send thank you packages to people, loyal customers? Yeah, yeah, like occasionally, right? Yep. Like uh, we don't do it every day, but I'd say once a month or so, we'll kind of, uh, or we'll pick out, or some, you know, hey, somebody gave us a shout out for no other reason than they like our product. Like we just try to, you know, kind of take care of them, send them a me a shirt, yep, product, ricochet, yep. something. Um, in conjunction with, you know, saying, Hey, really appreciate that, you know? Yeah. And so in, in listening to you talk about all this stuff, you know, the way I'd summarize it is, is there's all these different things you're doing, right. And it, you know, any e-commerce store, it's not like you're working on just this one thing today kind of thing, but you do have to keep focused, right. You can't do too many things at once. You've got to do a step at a time. But it's not like there's just one set of rails you're riding along. Like it, it's spaghetti, and you know it's the whole throw spaghetti against the wall and see see what sticks kind of concept. Yeah. And but yeah. you got to be watching and, and seeing what sticks and and listening to your customers. Um, however, listening happens, right? It may be watching what they're doing on the website and sales. It may be talking to them physically, or it may be calling up your abandoned carts or whatever. But you you've got to listen to what they're doing through all the different ways that you're getting a signal from them to mm -hmm. determine which of all these best practices you're trying are working. And that in the end, when you do that, it gives you a better understanding of your customer and you can start to see the big picture where it's not like you can see that big picture when you start, right? You, you got to get in the car and drive before you can see where that destination is, yeah, is for you. Yeah, totally. Like just doing it, you learn so much about your customer, right? Like I, I feel like that's something that uh, the past year that I'm really starting to get and then appreciate and then want to get even a better understanding of that customer, right? Um, and all this stuff, right, is like, you start off and you think you know your customer hey it's going to be ill you know males between you know 18 and 25 and they're gonna like cars right yep. that's my that's my thing but your customer is not that right like we think we know our customer our customer is you know when you think about like facebook algorithms and like you know uh, it was like intelligence agency level type of understanding of who that person is. They have, you know, 300 data points on what that person does, doesn't do, likes, is, is not, all that kind of stuff. Like that, that level of understanding is uh, maybe something we aspire to, but uh, it's really about like uh, determining the customer's needs and trying to fill those, yeah, or not fill them. Yeah, yeah. Well, and, and also, 
as you develop your brand message and, and not just your brand message, but your brand, right? Like the, right. the, the authenticity that you have, right. As an animal lover, right. A, a you know, a, a company that came in and says, Oh, I'm smarter. I'm, you know, more uh, financing. I'm going to put these rep to chip guys out of business. They'd never be able to do because you have an authentic brand. Like I've seen you do your podcast where, you know, you're, you're holding a snake and you're just, it was, it was a female and you're like, Oh, this is such a beautiful girl. And you're, you're petting this thing. Like it was real. Mm -hmm. Right. And like people see that, that also love snakes. They're like, this guy is real and authentic. Therefore this yeah. brand is real and authentic and you can't fake that kind of stuff. Right. No. And you should, I mean, you shouldn't even want to, right. I think that's just what, well, you know, that is a core, that is core to our brand is like, you know, made for reptile people by reptile people, right? Like this is a, a play on anything else. And I think probably a lot of your clients are like that. Like that's why we get into these, these businesses. Um, and it's, you know, we can never lose sight of that. That's gotta be a, up here. That's why we're doing what we're doing. In the meantime, we gotta figure out how to make a living out of it. But, yeah, well, uh, but, but there's the key, right? Is yes. Most small business owners are probably at that level of authenticity. The challenge yeah, for them yeah. is to get that out in their messaging so that their customers can see that. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. Always a challenge. Yep. Always Which, a challenge. Unless, unless you do what you do is just get up there in front of the camera and just start talking. And that's, that's pretty damn valuable. You know, it's hard to do, but it's pretty damn valuable. I think. I'm more introverted than you are. And you know, Oh, no. it, it's it's just like Nike says, just do it, right? Just do it, yeah. Like I, I was a yeah. spokesperson accidentally I, when I worked at Microsoft. I was an Xbox, and I became one of like the four or five spokespeople for Xbox. And I would have to go to you know industry events and talk to press for three days straight. You know, a thirty minute clip with each different press outlet, right? And once you do that one show, you know, three days at thirty minutes a clip, like you know how to do it, right? And then you start doing show after show after show. It, it's it's a learned skill for most people. Some people may be natural at it, you know, yeah. great. Uh, I respect those people, but most people that are, you know, good at it or competent at it, it's a learned thing and they were very uncomfortable about it in the beginning, but you know, just do it. You know, would you yeah. now do another, like you did for your December video? Uh, would you do another one of those pretty quickly again? Yeah, I think it's carving out time, but I mean, yeah. the benefit to it now is like, uh, just like you said, we learned, we learned yep. some things that are going to make it faster, easier, uh, you know, keep us from going down some different pitfall roads, you know, whatever it is, make sure your audio is good. Yep. You know. Yeah. Well, and you know, you also get over some of your inhibitions about doing it, right? You know, just do it, right? Like you're, you're a way better looking guy than I am. I'm like the ugliest guy that I've seen on YouTube in the past year, but people uh, aren't listening to me for my good looks. They're listening I've to me heard. for my advice. Right. And you just, you learn to get over your insecurities about things and, and just put yourself out there. No, I got a face for radio. So I know I, I, no, you're, you're a good uh, looking guy, JT. So, uh, so I don't, you, well, I, I, I hire good looking people. That's, that's my, uh, that's my secret. Yep. But you know, you know, in, you know, in all seriousness, like in authentic brands, right. And this is even before the age of the internet, where it was like the, I love this, you know, business so much I bought it. Those, you know, people that were the spokesperson for their own businesses kind of thing. You know, yeah. th there's, you know, some of those people are crackpots like Crazy Eddie or something like that. But there's also an authenticity behind it that, you know, that authenticity is, is a connection that people can make to a brand. And, you know, I think all small stores, there's a couple of exceptions, but very rare, all small stores, you know, the owner should be the face of the brand. And you've put yourself out there and you're doing that now um, where other people aren't. And that's why they're behind. Trying. Yeah. Yeah. It's not, it's definitely not something that's comfortable for me, but uh, that's how we grow. Right. Totally. Totally. You, that's how you grow as a person and that's yeah. how you grow your business. Right. Yeah, exactly. It is win-win. Yeah. So um, we've been talking for quite a while here. Any other uh, words of wisdom for uh, people that are in the situation you were in a year ago? <clears throat> I don't know. It's, it's a lot kind of, of the things that we've danced around or talked yep. about already, which is like one, whether it's the website stuff or getting online or, you know, whatever, doing a video or whatever. I, 
I find a lot of value and I know because you say this all the time too, is just do it, just like do it right. Like do it and let it be crappy and don't get fixated on it has to be a hundred percent, right? Do the 80%, put it out there, learn on the next one, just start building like that. And that, and that applies to a lot of different things, not just like videos or promo or anything else. That is a beautiful summary of, of the whole conversation we just had. Right. Literally, like we can end right there because that that is just do not be embarrassed. Just do it. It's going to be horrible. And that's OK. Yeah. Yeah, that's OK. It, 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 uh, like I look at it like this is like get used to it. Right. Get used to the suck. Get used to it hurting and get used to failing. Right. Because it's all on the path to success. Yeah. Uh, the only time that you fail is when you quit. Yep. Well, I I appreciate all the insight and, and all, the, all the stuff you've been sharing with us. I, I, it's been a great time. Yeah, so I'm happy to do it, Scott. And uh, I know you yelled at me when we had a break, like not to not to promo you or like give you a shout out. But it's hard not to because I really do appreciate the things that you bring to the table outside of web development. And that's uh, I think that's probably what your business is probably should be known for is like, it's more of business development. It's not necessarily it just happen to be technically, uh, uh, competent. Yep. Yep. Web stuff. Yeah. Well, that's, that's my foot in the door. Yeah. All right. Thanks a lot. You got it, Scott. You've been listening to the Shopify solutions podcast with Scott Austin. This podcast is brought to you by Jade Puma a Shopify-focused agency located in San Diego, California. If you like what you heard, please leave a review and subscribe on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts. If you'd like to work with Scott on your brand, email him at scott at jadepuma.com.